All right, good evening, church. I hope you're having an amazing day and keeping cool wherever you're at. It's oh, it's incredible how hot it's been. Yes, good evening, church. Hopefully, like Pastor says, hopefully everybody's staying safe and staying cool. It's a, And it's going to get warmer. So uh, yes. please let us know if you need anything. Don't be afraid to call the church if you need water. Um, or even a cool place to stay, you, you can come down and hang out at the church. So it's not air conditioned, but it is cool enough. So make it sure is. you're uh, keeping cool, but let us know if you need anything as well. We'll do whatever we can to try to help. Um, we're going to dive right into 2 Peter chapter 1 um, and start going through there. As I was reading it this morning, I was just thinking about uh, a portion of it. And so I figured I wanted to share a little bit, but Tim hasn't uh, thought about it much at all. So this should be fun. <laughs> Um, do you want to get a start or do you want me to start? Uh, let's, you go ahead and start. This All right. right. Second Peter, verse 1. I'm going to read this first section here. Mm -hmm. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and, our Lord, and, and of Jesus our Lord seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now, for this very recent reason also, Applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. Verse 11, For in this way the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things even though you already know them and have been established in the truth which is present with you. I consider it right, as long as I am in this earthly dwelling, to stir you up by way of a reminder, knowing that the laying aside of my earthly dwelling is imminent, as also our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me, and I will also be diligent at any time after my departure, you will be able to call uh, these things to mind. Verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise from your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow. This is interesting that this is Peter writing these. Peter, yes. who was uneducated, they talk about, you know, we read right. that in Acts. Mm -hmm. um, unlearned uh, fishermen by trade. Yeah, you yeah. can hear how eloquently he writes and the understanding of how, how quickly... Um, <laughs> he learned to recognize and hear the word of God. And, and I love that he talks about mm. verse 21, you know, for, or 20, 20 and 21, that no prophecy of scripture, you know, scripture, it wasn't their own interpretation. It wasn't Peter's just own, this is my ideas, but it was men were moved by Holy Sp the Holy Spirit. And, mm. uh, you know, I think 
if we can get to that point in our lives, in our Christian mm-hmm. walk, <laughs> just to be led and moved by the Holy Spirit, um, as opposed to what, what Jose wants or what Tim wants, but being obedient and led by the Holy Spirit, I think, I think that's part of what we're, we're called to do. I think that's really the, the, what we should be striving to do is learn to be obedient to the call of the Holy Spirit. Um, any thoughts? And then I want to share, uh, talk about some of these other verses real quick. But <clears throat> there's a lot of material there. But I do like what you were saying about that, though. The, the men of God, they were so in tune with God that they, they allowed the Holy Spirit to move through them. And so, you know, right, Paul, Peter knew that they were just men, but he knew that they were used by God to speak his word. And I, verse 19, a more sure word of prophecy, were unto you do well that you take heed, take heed unto the word of God, as unto a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Take heed unto the word that God gives us unto you. It shines brightly in this darkness because this world it's just full of darkness. Yeah. We, we seek for the truth. We thirst and hunger for God's knowledge, for the truth. And there's only one truth. You may think that the truth that you perceive is the truth, but yeah. we also got to remember that there's a spiritual warfare. The enemy, master deceiver, will try anything in his power to deceive us. And there's only one true truth that lasts forever throughout all of eternity. And that's yeah. the word of God. And yeah. he pointed out, God uses men to teach us his word. Yeah. And stuff. And yeah. so to bring light in the darkness, you may feel like you're surrounded by deception, darkness, but know that God loves you. God cares for you. God wants you to yeah. know and experience the truth, the light, the love. Um, you were saying yeah. that earlier <laughs> yeah. about the steps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I, I like what you said about the one truth is the word. Yes. <laughs> I was talking with this another friend, uh, another pastor, and we were saying, you know, that of all the words described Jesus, mm-hmm. the idea of the word, the word, Jesus is the word, and there's power in the word, and the truth is in the word. Yes. But I was looking at verse 5, and you kind of get all the way, um, he even talked about, even in verse 10, he says, if you practice, as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble in verse 10. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, well, wouldn't it be nice never to stumble or do, to stumble less? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, we're talking about, well, we don't stumble when the light's in front of us and we can see. Mm-hmm. But I like what he talks about, the things that we're supposed to be doing. And if we actually even just kind of look at these from the opposite side, love is the final goal here. The, the very end one is love. Yes. It's kind of the steps to, to you, know, you know, Jesus commands us to love God. He's commands us to love our neighbors as we love, our, you know, as we love ourselves. And, he's, you know, so this idea of love is is essential to the believer they'll know you're my disciples by your love and we say well how do i learn to love like that how can i even get to that point if we can just kind of work it backwards well to get to love it has to have brotherly kindness right we have to be able to be kind to our brothers (laughs) exactly and he's talking to the believers here too and as believers sometimes we we can't even learn to love the Christians next to each other. It's difficult to <laughs> being love one another. It's especially in today's society, you know, right. there's so much anger and But if we can't love our Christian brothers and sisters in Christ, how are we supposed to love the lost? Exactly. It's and so, you know, so we see these steps. Well, how do we get the brotherly kindness? Well, in your godliness. Becoming like, you know, the thing is uh, mm-hmm. worshiping God. Like, you know, Becoming less like ourselves, just yes. dying to ourselves almost. Yes. So then we're able to love our brother more. As long as we're still thinking, I think that we're right, <laughs> our <laughs> own self right. Like I'm the one that can do all this. Mm-hmm. Like that. I mean, that's that's pride, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah, because we're thinking of self. I'm the one that can do all this. When we need to remember, it's only through God's grace. It's only through His power to love one another through kindness, through brotherly love, to charity. Well, and how, yeah, and, and so what's before godliness, this pride, he says, mm-hmm. uh, perseverance is what says of mine. Yes. Perseverance, like, I don't think anybody likes that one. Patience. You just need to, you just keep going, you, you just have to wait it out. Put well, it in God's hand, knowing that he's in control. Patience, you see, Lord, I don't understand it, but we know that you're in control. 
and everything works to me well. Okay, all right, that's been 10 minutes, but I'm gonna finish up. Uh, mm -hmm. Before perseverance, self-control. This is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. Continue to rely on the Holy Spirit to do, to help you out with this. Before self-control is in your knowledge, is the things that we begin to mm -hmm. think, we begin to dwell about, we begin to understand, right? Before knowledge, moral excellence. Start with that, start with, start with just being a good person, right? Right, just I mean, to do what is right. Yes. Just to do what is right. Yes. Uh, if it feels wrong, it probably is wrong. But if you just start with these little things, there's this mm -hmm. kind of this progression that you can get to this point of, of, of having the love that Christ has. And, mm -hmm. and I, would continue to, uh, I would encourage you to continue to just think about these things, dwell on these things, yes. and look at this process. And, and start, with, start with the first and keep working your way through. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for spending some time with us. I know we went through that quickly. And I know there's a lot more in there, but hopefully that encourages you this evening. Um, Tim, would you like to close us in prayer? I can. I'll try to make it <laughs> short and sweet, but to the point. How um, yeah, there's so much in this material. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this Wednesday evening time of thought, spending time in your word. I just pray that you'll just be with each and every one that is listening, be in each and every one that hears your word, acknowledges your truth, accept you into our hearts as Lord and Savior, the one that offers the truth in this chaos, the one that offers light, shine the light to the people that need to see the light and help us, Lord, to make it our aim to please you by obeying your commandments, yes. which is to love one another, which is to love you far above anything and everything to make it our aim to love you above everything and to love one another as you love us, Lord. Yes. We thank you. Bless each and every one and your will be done for you to be glorified. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless. God Have bless. a great week and we hope to see you all on Have Sunday. Have a good night. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>